The life without parents is the worst life ever. Parents are support and shade for us. The value of parents in our lives can never be ignored. They play a very great role in our lives. They protect us and give every sacrifice to make us happy and pleased. Parents are our true guardians. They are the real reasons of our success and happiness in this world. We should take care of our parents and elders. God helps only those person who takes good care of their parents. Here is the story of a son who wanted to fulfill the wishes of his father. The title of the story is Taro's Reward. A young woodcutter named Taro lived with his mother and father on a lonely hillside. All day long, he chopped wood in the forest. Though he worked very hard, he earned very little money. This made him sad, for he was a thoughtful son and wanted to give his old parents everything they needed. One evening, when Taro and his parents were sitting in a corner of their hut, a strong wind began to blow. It whistled through the cracks of the hut and everyone felt very cold. Suddenly, Taro's father said, I wish I had a cup of sake. It would warm me and do my old art good. This made Taro sadder than ever, for the heartwarming drink called sake was very expensive. How do I earn more money? He asked himself. How do I get a little sake for my poor old father? He decided to work harder than before. Next morning, Taro jumped out of bed earlier than usual and made his way to the forest. He chopped and cut, chopped and cut as the sun climbed and soon he was so warm that he had to take off his jacket. His mouth was dry and his face was wet with sweat. My poor old father, he thought, if only he was as warm as I. And with that he began to chop even faster, thinking of the extra money he must earn to buy the sake to warm the old man's bones. Then suddenly, Toro stopped chopping. What was that sound he heard? Could it be, could it possibly be rushing water? Taro could not remember ever seeing or hearing a rushing stream in that part of the forest. He was thirsty. The hacks dropped out of his hands and he ran in the direction of the sound. Taro saw a beautiful little waterfall hidden behind a rock. Kneeling at a place where the water flowed quietly, he cupped a little in his hands and put it to his lips. Was it water? Or was it sake? He tasted it again and again. And always it was the delicious sake instead of cold water. Taro quickly filled the pitcher he had with him and hurried home. The old man was delighted with the sake. After one swallow of the liquid, he stopped shivering and did a little dance in the middle of the floor. That afternoon, a neighbor stopped by for a visit. Tara's father politely offered her a cup of the sake. The lady drank it greedily and thanked the old man. Then Taro told her the story of the magic waterfall. Thanking them for the delicious drink, she left in a hurry. By nightfall, she had spread the story throughout the whole village. That evening, there was a long procession of visitors to the woodcutter's house. Each man heard the story of the waterfall and took a sip of the sake. In less than an hour, the pitcher was empty. Next morning, Taro started for work even earlier than morning before. He carried with him the largest pitcher he owned. For he intended first of all to go to the waterfall. When he reached it, he found to his great surprise all his neighbors there. There was carrying pitchers, jars, buckets, anything they could find to hold the magic sake. Then one villager 
knelt and held his mouth under the waterfall to drink. He drank again and again and then shouted angrily, Water! Nothing but water! Others also tried but there was no sake, only cold water. We have been tricked, shouted the villagers. Where is Taro? Let us drown him in this waterfall. But Taro had been wise enough to slip behind a rock. When he saw how things were going, he was no way to be found. Muttering their anger and disappointment, the villagers left the place one by one. Taro came out from his hiding place. Was it true? He wondered. Was the sake a dream? Once more he caught a little liquid in his hand and put it to his lips. It was the same fine sake. To the thoughtful son, the magic waterfall gave the delicious sake. To everyone else, it was only cold water. The story of Taro and his magic waterfall reached the emperor of Japan. He sent for the young woodcutter and rewarded him with 20 pieces of gold for having been so good and kind. Then he named the most beautiful fountain in the city after Taro. This, said the emperor, was to encourage all children to honor and obey their parents. The moral of the story is that one should always work hard to fulfill the dreams and wishes of the parents. A child should be thoughtful, obedient and hardworking to make parents' lives happier. With hard work, one can get whatever he wants and even nature helps that person with miracles.